Hey friends, Ash here with Jensen. So hope you're doing well. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some people's absolute favorite type of fragrances and some people's bane of their very existence. We're talking about blue fragrances. And today, more specifically, everyday super versatile blue fragrances, which is, I guess, just actually every blue fragrance. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about some blue fragrances that you can wear anywhere, anytime that people are gonna love because they're blue. I'm looking down here. All of these fragrance bottles are great shades of blue, except for one. We'll get to that one later. Now, I'm not saying that these are my personal favorite blue fragrances of all time. Some of these I like much more than others, but I wanted to cover a wide range here. So we've got some cheap ones, we've got some more expensive ones, and some right in the middle, but all of these cover your blue bases. And I've already said this like two or three times, I feel already, but in case you're unaware, for some reason. A blue fragrance is a fragrance that is extremely versatile, mass appealing, easy to wear, daytime, nighttime, anytime is the right time. A lot of times these fragrances are gonna share similarities either in the opening or the base or both. A lot of times in the base, they're gonna have some sort of amber woody, uh, aroma chemical, something like ambroxan or amber extreme or any of the other amber woody type molecules in the opening. A lot of times you're going to see citrus or apple and ginger and things like that. And they have blue bottles, <laughs> usually. All right, we're kicking things off with Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Parfum. Now, this is not one of my personal favorites, but I do think the Eau de Parfum is much better than the Eau de Toilette. So if you smell K and you like it, I think this is the one that you should get. It's got blood orange, fig, juniper, and pimento, along with some woodiness in here. Uh, the opening is actually a good amount different than most other blue fragrances out there, and that's where it is a little bit divisive. It's nice and fresh in the opening, good amount of citrus, has kind of a clean laundry feeling to it to an extent, and some fresh spiciness as well. The Eau de Toilette of K really didn't like very much at all. I think Eau de Parfum takes that formula and just improves it in, in just about every way possible for me. So, K Eau de Parfum kicking us off. Next up, uh, one I do like a lot, Aqua de Joe Profundo from Giorgio Armani. This one has C notes, rosemary, cypress, and bergamot. It has that Aqua de Joe DNA that everybody seems to love. Except for that one party pooper out there, pooping on everyone's Aqua de Joe party. Aqua de Joe Provando takes that DNA of Aqua de Joe and gives it a modern twist, a nice little green touch to it. And I'm a big fan of green and fragrances, so I dig that for sure. The aquatic nature of the fragrance is amped up here pretty well. You don't get as much of that white floral kind of aspect that you're gonna get from the original in Profundo. Really love that one. I would say that is still probably my favorite Aqua de Joe as of this video. Profundo Lights is very solid as well, so is Profumo, but for me, Profundo is the one I'm going with. Now we got a cheapie. This is Jimmy Choo Man Blue. And this one interestingly sells very well at retail stores, or at least last time I checked it did. Lavender, vanilla, ambergris, leather, and pepper. Some of the notes in the scent. Now this one is interesting because the very first time that I smelled this fragrance was at a Sephora. And I remember thinking, man, that is the most generic piece of crap I've ever smelled in my entire life. I just kind of was strolling along and I saw it there on the counter. We made eye contact and I thought, I've not smelled you yet. Let's... <sighs> But truly, that was me just being in a snobby mood that day because I did try this a number of times after that, and it's actually really not that bad. It does take maybe some aspects from a bunch of other blue fragrances, but for the price, that's really solid. It's got a clean lavender, a nice sweet vanilla in there, which does set it apart from a bunch of other blue fragrances because while it is still fresh, you have this kind of warm sweetness that works up from the bottom of the scent up as you wear it that a bunch of blue scents don't have. And for the price of discounters, that's really good. Because let's be honest, if you're buying Jimmy Choo Man Blue, you're buying it because you wanna wear it and wear it in a lot of different places and you want people to like it, right? You're not looking for the most unique artistic thing on earth and there's nothing wrong with that. Next up, my funky looking bottle of Y Eau de Toilette from Yves Saint Laurent, which is missing the Y. Talked about this a bunch of times, but my Y EDT bottle got a little busted up and the Y just went boom. 
Off she goes. Aldehydes, bergamot, ginger, mint, and ambergris are some of the notes in this fragrance. Really, though, it's ambroxan. Eau de parfum, and to a lesser extent, Le Parfum and Y Live are the fragrances in this line that get the most love, at least here on YouTube. But Y Eau de Toilette is really, really solid if you're talking about a fragrance that has great casual use, but also is fantastic in offices or office situations and more formal situations as well. Because while it does have a bit of sweetness and freshness in there, it doesn't come across too overly youthful or heavy handed or cloying. So it's a fragrance that is really well suited to being worn in situations where you might be dressed up a little bit more than usual. Also a surprisingly huge compliment puller, maybe not as much as Y Eau de Parfum, but still more than probably 98% of fragrances out there. Pulled that out of my butt, I have no clue. 98% sounds good though. Up next, Parfums de Marley, Sedley. Another fragrance that I was kind of disappointed in initially because it comes across just pretty simple, you know, for the price you would think you have a little more going on. Maybe you would think the quality would, would come across a little bit more. And it's another one that did grow on me more over time. It is another positive attention puller. It's very brisk, very fresh, bunch of mint in this one. You've also got citrus, lavender, and ambroxan, and that's pretty much the story of the scent. You know, you spray it on, bunch of citrus, bunch of mint, very, very bright, very fresh, very clean. And then as it dries down, you get that ambroxan, that universally appealing kind of modern masculine dry down. So it really depends with that one what you're going for. If you're just going for a fragrance that has ultimate usability, but it's definitely not anything, you know, hyper complex as far as niche fragrances go, then you could get that one. You just wear it out. People are going to like it. But if you're looking for a niche fragrance that's really going to set itself apart from designer fragrances in the sense of how the fragrance is composed, you know, something that's going to have a lot of nuances, something that's going to come across very unique. That's not it. So it just depends on what you're after. If you're just after that simple but luxurious high end designer type of feel, sadly kills it. Now, here's this stupid bottle that's not blue screwing up my whole blue vibe I've got going on. It's Luna Rosa Carbon. Could have gone with the ocean. Yeah, maybe I should have done that. This one's got lavender, ambroxan, bergamot, and pepper, and this is uh, Dior Sauvage, if it was made by Prada. It smells very similar to Dior Sauvage, uh, done in very much the same way, the same style, and in that aspect, it has the essence of Sauvage, which is, hey man, you like how I smell? Of course you do. And I'm gonna wear you everywhere. That's the essence of Sauvage. It's a feeling. Is that what they say? It's appealing. Or Johnny Depp, he says something like that. Right after he drives out into the friggin' desert and buries his rings and necklaces. Luna Rosa Carbon, thankfully, will not take over your mind and make you drive into the desert, though it's much smoother than Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. People do like it just as much as Sauvage, and frankly, it's a little bit easier to wear just because, again, it's not as aggressive. And I've talked about this a number of times. It still has really good performance, so it's not like you're really sacrificing anything by getting Lunarosa Carbon over Sauvage. I'm not saying that it's the better fragrance. I, I kind of have them both here, you know? six half dozen, but some people do prefer that one and it is more affordable. So Luna Rosa Carbon. Next up, Polo Blue Eau de Parfum. Now I don't like Polo Blue Eau de Toilette all that much. It's a big hit for Polo, big seller. You know, everybody seems to have worn it at one time or another, but to me it ends up smelling horrifically cheap. Don't like that cucumber in there. Uh, it just smells to me like a fragrance I would wear when I was in junior high school or you know, early years of high school. And this one, the Eau de Parfum, has that DNA of the Eau de Toilette, that feeling of the Eau de Toilette. 
just very much improved. C notes, bergamot suede, and vetiver, some of the notes in the scent here. So you do have a little bit of a contrast between the base and uh, the opening, which gives it a little more depth, a little more life, frankly, because you have that suede and vetiver, which mixes and bounces off very well with the citrus and the aquatic notes in the open. Because you can kind of pick it all up right away, swirling together. It's really, really well done. It's fresh, yes, but it has more versatility in the sense that you could pull this off during the evening and I think it would work just as well. So the Eau de Parfum for me, big, big step up from Polo Blue EDT. I'd go with the EDP, that, that big P. Now let's go with uh, something a little more expensive, shall we? Elysium Parfum Cologne from Raja Parfum. It's got a really pretty bottle, so that's cool. It's got a good atomizer, so that's cool. That's cool. Now this one has a ton of notes, just a whole bunch. Raja Parfum likes to do that. They like to throw in, you know, 40 notes. And then they look at you looking at the no breakdown and they're like, you see that? That's luxury. This one has vetiver. It's got juniper, citrus, black currant. There's a lot going on here, like I said, with the no breakdown. And what Elysium does is it takes the idea of a blue fragrance and it kicks it up a notch. It does make it more interesting. It does make it have more contrast. There's more going on here. It takes that idea and brings it up to a, a refined and luxurious level in terms of the scent profile. Now, Sedley takes a different approach. They try to just make it luxurious, yes, but make it more approachably simple. Now, one thing with Elysium is a lot of people do not get great performance with it. And that's kind of a bummer because it's not cheap. Now, I don't get terrible performance from Elysium. Maybe not amazing, but not terrible. But I have seen a lot of people say that they do not get good performance. We're in the home stretch here, the final two. Next one, Chrome Extreme from Azaro. Green Mandarin, C Notes, Cashmere, and Juniper, some of the notes in this scent. And some people find a similarity between Chrome Extreme and Aqua de Joe Profundo. Now, I don't think that these two smell exactly like or anything, but. When you look at these bottles and their colorations, they do have that in common. I mean, pretty close. One thing I really like about Chrome Extreme is the opening. The green mandarin smells great when you first spray this on. Yeah, it mixes with the juniper and the C notes. It's got this slight saltiness to it and just really pops. It doesn't come across too sweet. And I appreciate that. I like it being reined in a little bit so you don't get that overly synthetic kind of citrus feeling. And the dry down, very pleasant as well with that amber melding with cashmere. Chrome Extreme does not cost all that much from discounters. I think you can pick it up for under $40, I believe. That's a good price. It is one of the better chrome flankers. Some chrome flankers are garbage. That one is great. And last but not least, Versace Pour Homme. Lemon, Neroli, Tonka, Cedar, and Musk. Some of the notes in the scent. This one has a similarity to Chanel Allure Homme Sport, only cheaper. This one, a wonderful daytime fragrance, spring and summer especially, and it is very office safe. This was one of my go-to office fragrances for quite a long time, actually, just because I could spray it on really heavily and I knew nobody would care. What I meant by nobody would care is that I wouldn't get any complaints. Love Versace Pour Homme. The price is right on that one too. Doesn't cost all that much. Staple in lots of guys' collections for a good reason. There we go. 10 everyday blue fragrances. Hyper versatile. People love this stuff. You know who loves blue fragrances? The Beast Mode Gents. And even if they don't love blue fragrances, they do love blue fragrances. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Appreciate you guys so much. If you're interested in joining the membership program, there's a little join button below. If for some reason there's not a join button, check the description and there's a link in there. It says, click here to get perks, blah, blah, blah. That's not exactly what it says, but it's close enough. They get perks like member only giveaways, early videos, member exclusive videos, and more. So thank you, Beast Mode gents. Back to the video. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.